Okay, this how-to video is going to show you how to uh, set up and define differential pairs inside uh, the Cadence PCB tools. So there's uh, several ways to actually create differential pairs. Um, we'll start off by doing this in the schematic. So there's a couple of methods in the schematic. So depending on if the design is, um, is constraint enabled or not, if it's not constraint enabled, we can obviously select the, the design name in the project window and then go to the tools menu and there's an option called create differential pair. Um, this is, allows us to go and pick the, the individual nets. So we could say pick the two nets and then specify the name of the differential pair and click on create. There's also an auto setup button where we could effectively use um, set the filters. So if I've got all my differential pairs named underscore P or underscore N or plus or minus at the end, I can actually use that as a filter. So we'll hit a plus or minus there. You'll then see a list of all the nets. It gives me a default name based on the net name and I can add a prefix to that, say DP underscore, and I can then go and create. So that's one method. Um, if my design is constraint enabled, so it, it effectively you're invoking constraint manager, you'll notice now that that tools create differential pair is grayed out. Um, and what I would then use is I could actually use constraint manager for that. So I could launch constraint manager from within inside AllCAD capture, um, select the nets that I'm interested in. So just, just drag select a couple of nets, for example, right click, create differential pair, or I can do that from the objects um, create differential pair option here as well, where I get that same auto setup option to use the positive and negative filters. So that's defining it from kind of AllCAD capture. Um, actually in PCB editor, what we can do is we can do this from constraint manager. So if we go to constraint manager and we look at uh, the list of nets in our physical area, you can see I've got some differential pairs that have come through from the schematic here with the DPR or DPR object type. So I've got my, my, my two nets and the object type of a differential pair. Um, to make a differential pair here, similar to the way with the capture, I could effectively just drag select the two nets, right mouse button, create a differential pair, or I could use the, the objects create differential pair option. We'll go to the auto setup button. Um, let's add the, the positive and the negative. There's my, my four nets and my, my four uh, differential pair plus options there. That's, that's DP underscore. So it's then going to go and create those four objects, uh, those four differential pairs. So if I close this down, you'll now see my differential pairs are added here. And that's effectively the hierarchical object. So you effectively get a differential pair name and the two net objects underneath that. Once I've done that, I want to start creating rules for the differential pair. So um, there's a couple of options here. We can either do it as a physical constraint set or an, as an electrical constraint set. And the basic rule of thumb is that if you if you don't need to change the track thickness, um, whether that's from an impedance level or um, if you're going in at constraint regions, etc., rules by area, then you would define the differential pair rules. Uh, effectively, say your your if we panel on it across a little bit, you will see all the coupling parameters. So I can do midline spacing, primary gap, primary width, or my net gaps and my tolerance. You would do that as an electrical base rule. If you do wanted to change the, the track thickness per layer or if you're going in out of constraint regions, then the recommendation really is to do this as a physical constraint set. So if you go to the physical constraint set or layers, you'll see effectively my differential pair parameters here. So um, what we'll do is we'll create a new rule. So right mouse button, create a physical C set. I'm just gonna call this diff one. It's then a matter of uh, defining the, the rules that you want. So my line thickness, what track thickness do I want for my differential pair? So I'm gonna do 0.15. Um, the maximum line width, you may set this to be the same as the minimum line width if you're worried about um, impedance and you don't want the track thickness to ever change. If you don't care, you can just leave that as zero. I'm not gonna worry about that too much. I'm not gonna worry about necking the track at all, but you can set necking values if you want to. So when you're routing along, you can do a right click neck mode and that would then neck the track down to these specific values that you're, you're using. So my primary gap would be 0.15. Um, in this example, I'm actually going to set, I'm not going to set a net gap, but I'm going to set a tolerance, so 0.05. So this allows me when I'm routing off angle or odd angle segments, it allows the tools to recalculate the values correctly. Um, so what I can do here is I, I effectively then need to set something called a midline spacing, and that midline spacing would be effectively the primary gap minus, or the next gap minus the tolerance, basically. So in this example, it would be 0.1. 
So I can obviously set different values for, for the different layers. If we just click the, the, the little arrow next to the name, so if I wanted to maybe go and set um, the inner values to be 0.2, and you'll see then we then propagate all those values out in the main rule so you can see the different values as you go along. So if you were to set the inner values here, you'd obviously have to adjust them in line spacing to suit if you adjusted the primary gaps, etc. So you can make those changes if you want to. Once you're happy with these, um, set all the values that you want. So that's my rule sets defined. I can then go to the nets and I can then apply those rules. So that could be effectively just picked from the reference physical C set. I could pick diff one and that would then get applied to that specific net. Um, there are, are some examples where uh, you could put an override here. So I could actually come in and manually specify some values here. So if I wanted this to be say 0.15, I could manually add these values, but it's better to do this as a rule set and apply the rule set than it is to add manual overrides here. Um, I can also make uh, classes or groups of, of differential pairs. So if I wanted to put all these into a, a net class, I can effectively shift select all the differential pair objects, right mouse button, create something called a class. Let's just call it diff pairs. That then creates effectively a a net class based object so I could then apply the rule at the top level so through the net class and that would then apply to all of my differential pairs going forward. There's another video showing you how to define things like static phase control and dynamic phase control um, so watch out for those on the YouTube channel. Um, I will also say that um, for all of this information if you go to the uh, the parallel-systems.co.uk uh, web page or you can use orcad.co.uk then go to the guides option. If we pan down, there's actually an app note defining about how to do differential pairs. So we can look at um, defining differential pairs. And this is a very specific step-by-step uh, -step set of instructions about how to create the differential pairs, um, what the different um, objects are when you're defining things like primary gap, next gap, uh, the tolerance, the gather control, etc. For your specific rules, your midline spacing. Um, and this goes through a complete example using constraint regions creating different uh, gaps between differential pairs and other objects all the way down. So it's worthwhile having a look at that one there. There's also a supplemental notes one. So if you look at defining differential pair supplemental notes, this kind of talks about the coupled tolerance and the reasons why using the tolerance value in the differential pair rule is a good idea. Okay.